NBA Finals, Game 5, I mean, just absolutely bananas. Uh, I've got to tell you, I was not planning on watching all of the game. Like, I I thought I was just going to watch some of it. I was going to play some blackjack. I was, you know, mess around, have some some cool snacks, enjoy a nice evening out with uh, a buddy of ours that's actually moving at the end of the month. And turns out he is, like, way, way into the Suns. I had no idea he was a Suns fan at all. So we sat and watched this entire game front to back. I ended up putting money down on it uh, a couple of different times. But I got to tell you, uh, I saw a gambler that I have always heard about, and I know of people that have done this, but I've never been with them when they have done this. There was a guy that was sitting at the sports book right up next to the counter that was watching the game as it was going on, and he had a man purse with a lock on it, like like one of those secure, like you got to be able to get in this, you know, whatever, with stacks of $100 bills. And he was live betting this NBA game multiple times. Every time he would go up to the counter, because he, he was obviously had a lot on the Suns early, and started playing live multiple times. I started counting middle of the second quarter, and he went up to that counter and placed no less than 14 bets from the middle of the second quarter on, every one of them at least $500, and multiple $1,000 bets. I've never seen anybody jump with that much cash that many times. But, I mean, he had oodles of money. On the Suns. And he cashed quite a few of them because every time that line would get crazy big, like there were times that it was bucks like minus 11 and a half or whatever. So he would hit the Suns again. And he was, but he was sitting right next to us and would get down on a knee and he was cussing Devin Booker and he was cussing Chris Paul and he was crushed. I mean, he was, he was so irritated. He did cash some of them, right? And I'm sitting there, I got 20 bucks on this game. I, I got 10 bucks on the first half line and then I got Suns plus eight and a half. Uh, heading into the fourth quarter. like So I, I think I lost like 45 cents or whatever on the night. Like, it wasn't a big deal. But this guy, I have not seen it in person where a guy is dropping thousands and thousands of dollars in the middle of a game. Have, have you ever personally witnessed this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how much money, but, you know, I worked at the casinos for a while, and it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. You know, they didn't have sports books back then, but people were gambling on sports, obviously, at the poker tables where I was working. And, and you know, I mean, yeah, I saw I saw guys just walking around with huge stacks of money. I had know, not seen. Hand them back and forth. Yeah. Big stacks of chips sometimes. Like, so. I, I've seen the big stacks of chips. I've seen people, you know, at the, at the poker table. I've seen them at the blackjack table, all that kind of stuff. Never seen it for a sports game where they are doing these live bets consistently like as soon as this number would change they are hitting it and hitting it and it i mean it was listen twenty dollars to you a couple hundred bucks to somebody else it's it, it, it's know, a whole different world every my look my grandfather raised me we, we come from a family of gamblers it's part of it's in our blood and he used to say all the time the one thing about the casinos are is they got a paddle for every ass okay <laughs> all right. If you want to bet five dollars a game, they got a paddle to whoop your ass. All right. Yep. You want to bet five hundred dollars a game, they got a paddle to whoop your ass. And if you want to bet twenty thousand a game, they got a paddle that'll whoop your ass. They got a paddle for every ass. You got that right. You got that right. He was uh, a wise man. Yes, he was. Some crazy shit. It's hey, you you've had some great stories. Great stories. Uh, so speaking of the game, I mean NBA like this finals has been pretty fantastic. Uh, Bucks have now won three straight. Uh, they were shooting the ball, <laughs> but like unbelievably, but in the second and third quarters, I mean, the, just, the shooting the ball stressed me out, by the way, oh, stresses the hell out of me, my but God. it worked. And when it goes in, it goes in, yes. but when it doesn't, oh, it drives me crazy because I feel like they can score in the paint anytime they want. Just it's kind of what it felt like. Time they yeah. Want. yeah. It's kind of um, what it felt like. It's been an awesome series. I, I I have no idea where the ratings stand on it, and I don't oh, care about past ratings because yeah. past ratings don't matter. We live in a different world and a different time today than we used to. Um, but but I'm just I'm just gonna tell you, anybody who's not watched them because it's not the Lakers or it's not the Knicks or it's not the Nets or whatever, it's not big market teams. Those people can kiss my ass. All right, 
Like they're they they don't they're not they don't care about the sport. They don't care about the game because these games are awesome. The last two games have been unbelievable. Two of the best playoff games I might have ever seen. Not I mean, they're in the conversation as two of the best games I've ever seen. We had a block that 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 should be marketed better than anything else. Had had Giannis's block been a LeBron block on somebody or 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 one of these you know somebody from a big market team, it would be something else. The Eclipse, come on, man, he blocked out the <laughs> sun. What are we talking about here? What are we doing? It's it's ridiculous. It, it really is. Like, these are two incredibly entertaining teams. Uh, Chris Middleton. like, And they're two super likable teams, by the yes. way. Yes. Okay? Like, outside of Grizz fans, hate Chris Paul. All right? Yeah. But we just do, and that's fine. All right? This guy's wrecked our life since we've had the damn team. Okay? I don't think Coach Bud is very likable. Other than that. There's nobody that you can hate on any of these teams. If you yeah. if you hate anybody else, I can't exp- we need to have a conversation. Yeah. All right? Yeah, I'm with because you. Because no one else has been around long enough and have done anything dickish enough to hate. I I do agree with that. I did notice a big divide in the uh in the sports book cuz there was I'm telling you, there was a ton of people watching this thing, man. Uh and the divide was like the white dudes were were cheering for Milwaukee and the black dudes were cheering for Phoenix and I have no idea why. Like I was I was pulling for Phoenix, but yeah. like I I could not understand the. I mean I, I understand like when they showed the crowd like the Milwaukee crowd. I mean it was like ninety five percent white. Yeah, dudes. but that's the Midwest. I, I know. mean that's just what that's like the but, makeup of the Midwest. But I don't understand why like I I don't get the the breakdown of it like because <laughs> it was almost I, I, like I, completely split. So we we had we had we had some people over last night and 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 me and the guy that was here God uh, just anyway good dude good dude you know they're, they're friends of my wife's that you know they're both twenty five years old put a bullet in me if I ever have to hang out with another twenty five year old I just <laughs> I don't just hire a drifter have me killed I don't want to do it um, but dude was a good dude all right dude yeah. dude's a good dude I, I'm not shitting on him it, it's just I'm. I'm 20 years older than you, man. I'm old enough to be your stepdad. Okay. This is, this is weird. And I don't really want to do it, but anyway, um, like he asked me who I was rooting for before the game started. And I said, this is like the first series in a long time that I feel I'm not even going to use the word conflicted, but I don't know how to feel. Giannis is my favorite player in this series, not questionable. And there's a pretty big gap there, but like the next three guys that I love are all on the Suns. Okay, before you get to the next person that that I would root for or be a fan of or like in like a hierarchy order, the only player that I dislike is Chris Paul, but I like Coach Monty and I really don't like Coach Bud. And so I was like, hey, there's no real winner or loser here for me. I want to see good games. The first three games, we didn't get good games. Yeah. Um, the last two have been phenomenal before last night. I didn't know if we were going to get a good game or not. And, and I, I just told him, I said, man, I just want to see good games. I I'd love to see it go seven. Um, I want to see good games. I will tell you this. I, I changed my opinion last night. If the bucks are going to win, I want them to win in Milwaukee. If it goes seven, I think, I think that's where I stand now. If it goes, if it goes six, I want the bucks to win at home. And if it goes seven, I think I want the Suns to win. I think I want whatever home team to win to win. I, I'll tell you what I don't like. So I'm starting after last night to move my allegiance more to Milwaukee. And there's and there's two reasons for that. One, the the dude that like tripped balls in the middle of Suns game, I don't know, two, where yeah. you know it looked like he was levitating off the ground and has head arched back, and he was like like, I don't know, in some dreamland state. <laughs> Fuck that guy. And then the dude last night that's, like, flashing $100 bills yes. as they're counting, like, uh. Jonas's thing. I'm like, fuck that guy, too, okay? Like, yeah. if a car hit both those guys on their way home last night, I, like, I'm not going to cry for their families, all right? Like, this is – these are two big pieces of shit, and I'm yeah. quite certain Milwaukee's got plenty of assholes, okay? Oh, absolutely. Let's, we just haven't seen get them. this clear – if, if I was in, like, Deer Park, there's no doubt I'd be like, yeah, that guy could get hit by a bus, that guy could get hit by a bus today, and yes. I don't care. But but I haven't seen them 
on national TV over and over and over again. And that just kind of moved me a little bit. But like I said, we live in a world of super teams. If Giannis can win this thing by himself, I, I know Holiday's had some games. Okay. I know, I know he's had some help in every game. But this is this is no Anthony Davis situation, all right? This is yeah. no Dwayne Wade. This is no Kyrie Irvin. There's there's nobody close to the second best player on the last five seven championships games. You have to go all the way back to the 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 uh, Mavericks before you have a star, and the second best player is really just a bunch of role players. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can get that. I can get that. And um, that outside of my Celtics, that's my favorite championship team. That's that's hard to say. That Detroit team, I I loved that starting five. There's never been a starting five I think I've ever been a bigger fan of. That wasn't like my Celtics. Um, that's that's tough for me. But those are obviously one and two, not close. Um, as as my favorite championship teams that weren't weren't the Celtics. Yeah, I could. Okay, I could buy that. I could buy that. But if the Bucks um, don't close it out, I'd rather see. I think I. I think I want the home team to close it out. Yeah, like who, I who, think that's where I'm at. Yeah, if if the Bucks don't get it in Game Six, then you want the Suns to win at home because I'm, the I'm okay. The, is, I'm, o, I'm okay yeah. if the Suns win at home. I, I don't know why that is. Uh, mainly because I don't. I don't have any hatred for you. I love. We've talked about it here. Agnosium, my my affection for for James Crowder what I think he brings in value to a, to a franchise is oh, yeah. just unbelievable to have a guy like that in your locker room. Um, it, it just, it's so much more valuable than, than what you're getting from so many of these other guys that play his position and take his role. Devin Booker is amazing. Aiden has blown me away like nobody else. I just, I, w- I wasn't expecting that from him at all. So no, no, I mean, he, they've been just ridiculous. I, I like, thought he was, I thought his career would, there was a chance. I thought his career. There was a chance that it ended up looking like Greg Oden, and it wasn't because of injuries. It was just a dude that was really good in college because he was bigger than everybody else, yeah. and he could just dominate. And when you get into the NBA, you can't just be bigger because you're not always bigger than everybody else. Yep. But he's he's and, been fantastic, and, man. Well, he's outworked the shit out of everybody. He is he has changed his game. He's turned himself up. He's unbelievable. Yes. So the the first quarter to the fourth quarter, the difference between what the Suns were to start the game, 37 to 21 at the end of the first quarter, and then to see what the Bucks did in the second and the third quarter. I mean, just yeah. ridiculous shooting. Well, just and in the second quarter, off. Just, in, just, in, just in those two quarters alone, first and second. I, and I don't remember what it was at halftime. but It, it was, was 64-61. Like yeah. Yeah, the, the Suns were up by almost 20. Yeah, okay. no, the Suns were up then, by 16 the, at the end of the first, and yeah. then they were down by three. So they got outscored and they were by down 19. Down by three in one quarter difference. Like, just <laughs> an incredible swing there. And yes. then you're right. After the third quarter, now they're down by 10. And it was just it was ridiculous. Like, the shooting by the Bucks was ungodly. Just ungodly. The whole thing was ridiculous. So it was bananas. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.